This episode of Reppin' the State Line podcast with John, George, and Josh is sponsored by The Mortgage Dad. Working with George's team gives you an access to an unmatched menu of mortgage programs in over 100 years of combined mortgage experience. Skip the stress, love your mortgage experience, and get home with George. Visit www.homewithgeorge.com, NMLS ID 443967. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to episode 12 of Repping the State Line podcast with John, George, and Josh. Um, we clearly made a mistake in the last one, and we kept calling it 12 when it was only 11. So surprise. I think you were the only one. I think you were the only one calling it 12 because it's written <laughs> everywhere as 11. It's it's yes. 11 everywhere. We did have um, a little faux pas. Don't know if you noticed, but we're back. We uh, missed a week because we thought somebody told me we were going to be having episode 13. That's unlucky. So episode 13 is an unlucky episode. So we're not doing that. Um, But again, we're here. We're ready to go. Josh is not with us today, George. He is on vacation with the family in Lake Geneva. Not very far away, but a beautiful place to go to. Did he say where he was staying? I did not get all the details from him on where he was staying. Just that they were going off and they were going to enjoy the lake life for a little bit. So I'm assuming they're at the resort that's right by the lake Grand or Geneva. maybe or Grand one, Geneva or yeah. or they're doing an Airbnb somewhere over there. I don't know. That's exciting. Um, I wish I was at like Geneva right now. Well, you know, it is only 40 minutes away. We could go right now and go visit them if you we're, like. We're actually going on Monday um, with our, no, I'm sorry, on Sunday. We're doing a day up in Lake Geneva this coming Sunday. So right now it's Friday for all those watching. So two days from now with my house guest. Yeah, we've had, I've had a house guest for a couple house guests now. This is the third week. Unfortunately, this is the final week and my house guests have to go back next week. Um, but it has been just an absolute life changing experience for them which is exactly what i wanted to happen um we for all of those people watching that watch us regularly know that i'm ukrainian and i've got a family that's out there that there are refugees in poland well i fought hard did all out paperwork and was able to get them um my co- two of my cousins to the ability to come to the states for the first time in their life they did come three weeks ago or two weeks ago now it will be a full three weeks that they're staying. And we've basically, the last two weeks in that, I've just been absolutely crazy busy taking them all over the place. We've done, we went downtown Chicago. We've tried it. We even tried like every food group to hit here in Rockford area, like all the, all the staples so that they, in the Midwest area, really. I mean, we've done, um, we've done the Lou Malnati's. So they did the deep dish. Yesterday we went to Lino's. So they did the local pizza. Um, we are doing Portillo's today. We've done um, I Love Sushi, which, you know, it's a fan favorite of ours, of, of ours in our group. Yep. We go there often. We've taken them to um, across the street over to Garrett's. So they got to see, like, we did the patio there. We're doing um, Burger Bar. We did Lucy's yesterday. We've done the Beloit Club. So I'm just trying to give them all sorts. And we're doing Jam K on Saturday. <clears throat> trying to hit all the favorites, every type of, like, all the good local, locally owned. It's kind of a bit neat considering our channel. You know, we highlight these places. And in the last two weeks and this next week, I'm pretty much going through my favorite list of this, this area. And we're hitting them all just to give them a little uh, culture shock of what's, what we have to offer here in the States. And then obviously we've gone to Chicago, we've gone to Milwaukee, we're doing Lake Geneva yet. Um, and so I've taken them all over the best I could in three weeks. Well, I know we had a great time over the weekend. Um, you guys went to a White Sox game, uh, did the architectural tour of Chicago. Oh. 
and then met up with me and my wife at Geneva Winery in Geneva, Illinois, which is only about an hour and 20 minutes east of our state line area. Um, and that was a great experience, I believe. Like, I mean, I got oh, yeah. your sister, your brother was in town, your cousin came with. So, I mean, and I was talking with your wife about that. You guys would talk about JMK Nippons. And I was like, oh, you're a Nippon family because everybody knows in the Rockford area, you're either a Nippon family or a Shogun <laughs> family. That's how it is. And our family, yeah. we go to Shogun. That's our spot. We go to Shogun all the time. And I understand it's been um, generational basically for your wife and then your family because when she was growing up, they used to be at their original location over on Mulford. She was telling yeah. me they used to go there when it was just like three tables in a really small place. And now it's this big, beautiful building on Perryville. So, I mean, and don't get me wrong. I like the food at both places. It's just when we go out to go for, you know, Tabanaki hibachi. and we're doing the Hibachi grill, that's what we want. We want to go to, um, to Shogun. Shogun. Yeah. Um, but I it's want sushi. I go to, I love sushi. I, yeah. And I'm the same way. I like Shogun. I will go. I've been there many a times. But if if you put a gun in my head and said, hey, take me to the best Japanese restaurant in town, I'm taking it to JMK. In my opinion, it's the best. It's got the history. It's got the space. They, they Their chefs are, they put on a show. I'm sure they do at Shogun as well. But for me, you know, it comes down to the sushi for me. I think the best sushi in town, well, there's one roll. It's the Brooklyn roll at JMK. I don't think anything tops it in town. So I, that's what's my draw because I always, anytime I go to JMK, even if we do hibachi, I still have to get the Brooklyn roll. And that's just like my thing. Like I, I can have that every day. It's so good. Well, see, and I don't, I don't do any, we don't do any of that. Like, so if we're going for sushi, it is either I love sushi or Zen sushi up in Beloit. That's like our two places. Um, we go to all the time. The first place I ever had sushi in town was some, was spider sushi which was really amazing too down um was that alpine near harrison i yep. think um but i mean i've not been to mark's fusion yet and i know i'm being told constantly i have to go it's just i found the places i like and i don't do sushi regularly but when we go for japanese steakhouse it is for us shogun yeah they put on the show we've been disappointed with other places i mean that's why we don't go um during covid a few years ago so my family, we do um, we do a unique Christmas now because we don't have little ones anymore. Our kids are older. So, yeah. I mean, they're, they're young adults that live with us. So we will go um, Christmas Eve, we go to Shogun. That's what we do. But during COVID, they were shut down for Christmas Eve. So we went to the only place that was open, which was Benihana's over in gotcha. Schaumburg. And it was a set Christmas menu. So you could only get certain items for Benny Hanna's to be what it was. The quality I felt was rushed. The entertainment was not there, but I think cause it was the holiday, you yeah. know, and they were just overwhelmed. And, but, you know, I go to Shogun, it's the same meal. It's the same quality. It's the same entertainment. Whether I go on Christmas Eve or I go on a Tuesday, you know, in the middle of the summer. You, it's, it's great. Yeah. Right. I, it's consistent. I think we're spoiled. I That's think we're it. spoiled in Rockford to have, both Shogun and JMK, you go to the city, exactly. People think Benihana's, and I, I think that we do better locally than yeah. the national. And and I definitely agree with that. I mean, and, and of course, our, we're big proponents of shopping local, buying local, eating local. I mean, Absolutely. If, if given the choice to go to, you know, a chain restaurant or a local restaurant, I always try to go to a local restaurant, unless I'm really Absolutely. craving what that chain, that chain offers but yeah great stuff there um, yeah like after after our winery you come home you get had a couple of bottles of wine and you're like you know taco bell finally sounds good for the first time <laughs> right and and yeah no no it doesn't it does not i'm sorry Just kidding. I cannot do uh, no, I cannot okay. do taco. I mean we have so many great taco places in town i can't just go to, i can't justify taco oh, I bell agree. i mean right over there um on State Street, in the parking lot in front of Binnie's Beverage Deep, like in front of Binnie's. Um, yeah. Olivio's. Tacos. Right. Olivos, yes. Olive is always there. So if I am if I want inexpensive, good tacos, I'm not going to go to Taco Bell. I'll go get there three for five tacos. Yeah. Street tacos, three for five. 
it's quick, it's filling, you're in and out, and you're done. So, I mean, that's just my opinion. I'd rather hit there than go through a drive through for Taco Bell any time. Agreed. So, yeah, so the our weekend was this, – this last weekend was crazy. Um, and going back, I know we, I'm going to rewind a little bit. So you said skipping episode 13. I agree. I don't know if you've noticed, if you ever go to any hotel, there is no 13th floor. If you, I mean, it's just an unlucky number. So we will not have an episode 13. We are doing 20 episodes and it'll be one through 12 and 14 through 20. And we did take a week off yet. Last week was just insanely busy for all three of us. We literally couldn't find an hour to sit down. And, and I honestly thought it was episode 13. You know, I'm like, maybe that's a, maybe that's our sign. Like we picked the right. right time to take a week off. So it is what it is. We're still going to have 19 out of 20 episodes. We're going to name them one through 20 and skip 13. So as far as last week though, we did find the time to go and play at a golf play day at yes. Woodbine in Stockton. And I, I must say, for a play day that I've never gone to, never heard of until this year, I thought it was a spectacular play day. They did, the pace of play was amazing. A, they had drinks and brats for you for breakfast in the morning, like yep. a grab and go. So like early on in your, in your game, you just, you know, warming up after a couple holes, you come in, get yourself a brat, drinks all over the course. And then they had a spectacular lunch when we finished at like three, which was, I guess more of a dinner, um, but, and then the awards, my gosh, I like it, to me, it felt like they had an unlimited charity of giveaways. <laughs> it was just like, well, and the next name and the next name. And it just kept rattling off and pretty much everybody won something at that golf play day. I was pretty impressed. Well, the great thing about that, just to, just to rewind it a little bit. So um, that golf play day was held by the um, Tri-County chapter of the Northwest Illinois Alliance of Realtors. So just in this past two years, the Rockford Area Realtor, Area Association of Realtors merged with the Belvedere Board of Realtors and then Ramwell, which was um, the Realtor Association of Northwestern Illinois. And that, that area had three counties that they covered. It was um, like Lee County, Joe Davies County and Stevenson County. That was their tri-county area. Gotcha. Um, or Carroll County was one of them. I, I think it was Carroll, not Lee. So, but, um, so by doing that though, rather than dissolving an association of realtors, we just became that much bigger and stronger. So we have individual chapters now. So there's a Rockford chapter, there's a Belvedere chapter, there's a Tri-County chapter. And this was the Tri-Counties um, golf play day. And they'd done one every year. It just, I wasn't a member of their association at that time, but we're all one big family now. So I'm ha very happy that you guys got the chance to come out. I mean, what did you win? A $25 gift certificate to Beefaroo or something? No, I won $25 cash for having oh. closest to the flag. Okay. And, okay. And that side note, that was another thing that was really cool is every hole was like really unique prizes based off of really unique shots. Like closest to the, the pine on the right side before the bunker got a right. prize like i've never gone to play day or like the shortest drive like it was really fun to aim because i mean the four of us let's be honest none of us except for josh are really serious golfers and right. so we just had a blast and it was fun to kind of aim for these things that were actually attainable most of the time you go it's like longest drive longest putt and um closest to the pin which i have no skill to take either of those three so it's like, I'm never, I know they're like second thought and to go to a play day where you actually had things that we all could win. And it was pretty cool. And right. I won one, but that was a $25 cash prize. And then I won a $50 gift card to Texas Roadhouse. Was oh, nice. Other. And yeah. then of course it was one of those funny things. My name got pulled out of a drawing with a, it was a booze basket. I've <laughs> never seen, I've never seen a bottle of gray goose that was this big. So big. Yeah. I mean, it was like the double bottle. It's like, you know, two and a half feet tall. And then there was a bottle of um, Woodward, Woodford Reserve bourbon in there as well, which I mean, right there, that was those two bottles winning that that was the cost of admission for the play day for me. So I mean, that it was nice breaking even, you know what I mean? <laughs> and having a great day out with you guys. 
Uh, Tyler did well for the day. Josh did well. I mean, well, hell, Josh had most of the the balls we used for the day, except there was a stretch there where you were just a rock star. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know what happened, but I, I, we got to use a couple of my shots, which was awesome. Well, you like woke up and just started hitting the ball for a change. It was crazy. <laughs> So at least you were at least you're prepared then for the state line chamber golf outing this week. So that's another fun local event that we do every year. Yeah. It's uh, tomorrow, but technically you guys will be viewing it. Will have been yesterday, um, and we'll give you a recap of it next week's episode of what was going on, what happened at the state line chamber golf play day. But yeah, it's, it's every this week. year at this golf play day, some stuff happens that we never would have predicted, and I'm so excited to see what that is this coming year. Last year's highlight was to me was Mike Pillar showing up with his uh, coconut bra and grass skirt. And he was the first one to go up on the dunk tank and he didn't see it coming. And I, uh, his kids, his wife, everybody were kind of standing there watching him and he was showing off that nobody could dunk him. And he's sitting there going like, Ooh, it is a little coconut bra. And I came from behind and I slapped it and dunked. I was the first one to dunk him and boy, to this day, he says he's going to get me back, but I don't know how because he ain't going to be there tomorrow. <laughs> well, that's that's craziness. And I feel bad. I missed last year's golf outing. I actually got the opportunity to see my mom and dad for the first time since yeah. like 2019 because of COVID. So my, my mom and dad, my brother and my sister-in-law, they all live in New York City still. So um, unfortunately, when my brother called and said, let's get together for mom's 70th birthday, we can all meet at my at my house in Pennsylvania, um, him and his wife and his two sister-in-laws and brother-in-laws, her sisters and their husbands, the three families bought a house in um, East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, beautiful place. And so we went to visit, to do my mom's 70th birthday last year. And that was just an amazing time. And we, because of COVID, yeah. it was like two years, we couldn't see each other. It was just craziness. So it was, um, it was nice to be able to get Absolutely together. Worth so it. Worth yeah. missing the a golf play day, even though that, I think that's the first state line chamber slash Roscoe chamber golf outing I've missed since 2009 when I first joined the chamber. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's the crazy, that's, that's like a, the first one I've ever run. missed. And you're back. And, and I'm you're back, back this, this year. year. And get, and I've already made it official. And next year, our good friend, Josh, that's not here today, but Josh, that's part of this podcast is going to be the chair. So he will bring a, a fresh new look to it. Um, possibly change the theme, make it, uh, we're moving back to the ledges next year. So it should be, yep. should be interesting to see what he comes up with and his creativity because he's excellent at it as well. So yeah, golf play days abound, family trips abound. Uh, we've got, I've got one more big weekend planned and end of the week here once we get through tomorrow uh, with them Ooh. before they go back to Ukraine or to Poland. Um, and it's tough. It's really going to be a tough day to send them back because they're, they're family and right. they've been living with us for three weeks and my kids, and even though there's a language barrier, cause they don't speak very, I mean, very broken English. My kids don't speak any Ukrainian, but they still like, it, it's absolute amazement to see how kids can communicate, even though there's a language issue and they play and laugh and record stupid videos. And it's like, they're besties, but they they communicate in their own ways. It's really unique to see. And then I help translate and stuff, but for the most part, well, it's just crazy. And it worked out very nicely, though. When we were all together on Saturday night, um, you know, your your cousin, her English is pretty good, though. I mean, seriously, she 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 catches a lot of what we're saying. Yeah, I could tell. Like she, we we have we'd be having a conversation, and then she would say something to you, or she would actually interject in English so I mean just being here for three weeks has really helped her progress and emerge yeah. into the culture um but I mean speaking of we which all had we, a went time. To, we went to the Jeff Dunham show and I took her to it on Sunday so that was kind of like the re, the capped off the weekend Sunday afternoon Jeff Dunham was up in Beloit I don't know that it's a, it's a very polarizing I didn't realize this I always thought of Jeff Dunham as a ventriloquist who was a comedian and hilarious. But he whole, won America's Got Talent, didn't he? Yeah. Isn't that where Something he came like from? That. But yeah, no, he... I don't, yeah, he... Yeah, he... I think, sorry. <laughs> I don't know exactly... I don't know where he started, but yeah, I, I definitely... So he... I didn't realize this until the show. 
but he came out. So he's got, the, you know, these puppets and he's got one puppet that's um, Walter. And Walter is this like really frowning, grumpy old man. That's his character, his persona. And he decided to interject politics into the entire show. And he had Walter dressed as Joe Biden. And he brought up Walter, AKA the president. And oh my gosh, uh, I was surprised more people didn't walk out at that point because you know how polarizing politics oh, yeah. are right now. And like you're, you're either offending one side or the other side. There's no in between. And he came out with digs at Biden and the presidency and you, he crossed the line and then you're like, okay, so we're there now. And then he would cross it even further. And then he went further. And I was like, at one point I, I looked at like Ryan and the people sitting with him were like, holy shnikes, I can't believe he's getting away with this. And I was surprised more people didn't walk out, but he was bad. Like, Did people it, actually get up and walk out though? There were a few couples, yeah, that, that wow. just didn't care for the taste of his comedy. And it's funny because he, it was mainly that first character. And then he's like, all right, no, that's enough politics for today. And then his second character came out and he was like, okay, but maybe one more politics show. And he just kept, kept it going the whole show. It's pretty funny. Um, I, I'm not, I'm not going to argue either way on it. I don't think like our podcast is not about politics, but comedy's comedy and you, no matter which way you stand i'm glad that majority of people stayed because it was a funny show and he did a lot of stuff that was not politics related that just made you laugh he, he's really good I, i'm impressed with uh his work but it was a good show so she got to see that and she picked up on a lot of those jokes she gave me those dirty looks like oh, i can't believe he said that <laughs> it, it was pretty bad oh. but it was pretty good at the same time oh it's one of those things too like just being able to and not to get political but we live in a country that's unlike any other in the world we can publicly go stand on a stage as a public figure like that and bash our president yep. and and it's it's allowed and in a lot of countries around the world you go talk about you're your leaders jail you're going that. to jail yeah I mean, look, so, I mean, look at russia right now i mean not to bring up a sore subject, but you go, they, when the war started, there was a lot of protesters, Russian protesters that were against it. And all they did was just show up downtown to, to just to voice their displeasure with a sign and jailed, jailed, yep. jailed. It's crazy. So, I mean, so that's one thing we have to always constantly think about is how, how free we actually are here. We, we think we have issues, but on the same and, note, not to go there, but I mean, it's satire it's one way or the yeah, other it, I, yeah i actually was, watched a movie funny. recently i watched a movie the other night called vice it was on um it was on netflix it um, had a lot of big names in it so if you haven't seen it give it a look but it's very like how this was he was bashing you know biden this was very bashing of george w, w. bush and dick cheney yep. it was very left-leaning but it was good to watch it was it was entertaining and the very end of the movie, you know, I mean, they actually bring up the fact that they are very biased one way, which I thought was yes. cool that they ad they addressed it. But it was still an entertaining movie. It was not a bad couple of hours. So, I mean, we have to, as a society, in my opinion, this is my soap, my little soapbox, just yep. listen to each other a little bit and not go crazy as soon as somebody has a differing opinion. That's what made our country great. I mean. I grew up in New York City. It's the most diverse city in the world. 800 unique languages are spoken at any given time in New York City. You got to learn to live with people. You got to learn to yeah. like just just get along. I mean, I hate to say it like that's, that, but that's the thing. Like, I don't want to say that I'm Republican or Democrat. I'm not. That's not what I'm about. I right. just I know satire, satire, and I take comedy both ways. You know, just like. Um, you know, they when they roast people and, and yeah. at that dinner, that presidential dinner, I forget the name of it, but it's the one with all the, um, where all the media, it's right. the correspondence dinner, White House yes. correspondence dinner. And they roasted Republicans, they roast Democrats. And I think it's whatever comedians up there is hilarious either way. It's just, you know, you just take it what, for what it is. It's not meant to be serious. It's meant no. to be comedy, satire, a break from it, and maybe... Laugh at yourself if you're, you know, one of the political parties. Laugh at yourself a little bit because 
I think that there's a very common ground in the middle that many of us could be at and should be at. We're just not there at the moment. And eventually I'm hoping that we realize that that is, there is a, a sand, uh, non far right, non far left leaning middle that right. a lot of us can, can come to an agreement on in my opinion. Well, that's, that's the funny thing. It's you, you meet people and you talk and everybody, regardless of political affiliation, want the same things we just have different ideas on how to get there yep. so i mean and i've been dealing with this since you know graduating high school in the early 90s you know coming into the world and just the, the world of politics and all around us it's it's always been divisive it's been divisive sure. since the founding of our country um it's actually better than what it used to be i mean you know like the lincoln douglas debates they talk about that over in freeport that was like a big thing that happened and it was right there. It was held in Freeport. Back then, they used to like call the, their each other's mother's names. They would say pure slander against the other candidate when they would have these debates, like things you would get, you would never get away with today. And wow. that's what they would. That's the kind of stuff they would do back in those debates in the early years of our country. So, I mean, let's like what's that from um, uh, the movie Stripes? Lighten up, Francis. <laughs> you know. <laughs> 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 so but let's move on let's move on to some happy stuff um yes you you actually celebrated um at a beautiful place in roscoe that's a hidden yes. gem and it actually has a hidden, hidden name gem. it hidden actually has gem. a hidden name <laughs> yeah hidden gem alert for us here this is a perfect thing to discuss on this podcast so if you haven't been yet is a place in Roscoe. And when I say in Roscoe, I'm not talking about off in the boonies where you got to drive and drive and, you know, you feel like you're in the middle of the country. You literally go down 90, you exit on Rockton Road, which many of us know where that's at. As soon as you get off, instead of going left, go, you know, if you're coming from the south, go instead of going left into where all the stuff is, you make a right. I've never made a right off of Rockton Road. You make a right, another right right there, and you end up at a place called Hidden Creek Estates. Never heard of it. Never knew that it was 18 minute drive from my house. When we Googled it to not. Oh no, I just lost George. I don't know what happened there guys, sorry. So George was, um, he just froze completely on our recording. Their vows. Whoa, whoa, George, stop one second. You froze for a second there. Um, for the people watch on YouTube, it's hilarious the face George had made. But can you step back for a little bit? And you never went that way. You Googled it. That's the last thing we saw. And then your face did this. Oh. <laughs> so are you good? Now? I, Am I good now? You're you're good now. You're moving. I don't okay. know what happened. I don't know how it happened. I mean, obviously, there's some technical difficulties. We can't control that when we're not in a studio. But um, so okay. let's continue. I'll, I'll go back. So you exit at Rockton Road and instead of making a left you make a right I've never gone right but it's right there so, so you had east you had east on Rockton east Road off, yes and it's real right around the corner there it's in the middle of the woods it's called Hidden Creek Estates absolute hidden gem in my opinion we were there um, we were invited uh, for a private party on a Sunday for a 40th anniversary wedding renewal of vows of uh, family of ours and you can rent the whole place on the weekends and they have a they have a house like an airbnb type thing where you can actually stay there um, with a balcony and porch where you can sit out and have uh, drinks at the winery they have a barn like a really old barn and they remade the barn so into two halves so the top half is open where you can you can bring in live music to play and they have tables set up out there a really nice huge outdoor deck on the bottom half they have a patio with a whole bunch of fire pits and those patios basically go up to the little lake that they have there they have another area where you could bring in um, live music in the stage and then they even bring in for food they bring in food trucks so they had a pizza food truck or this one where it was wood fire pizza made to order like a single uh, a single serve right. pizza 
and it was off off the chain amazing and that bottom half of the barn they've made it into like a really cool bar and they with it's a garage so like the barn is the barn was remade like the garage was turned into a bar and then the upstairs is your event space um and the bar was like they they have the garages that open so you can have outdoor and then you can close it if it's the weather isn't perfect um on the inside they have couches and big big bar it's all eclectic very like rustic um really i i had a blast and it top shelf liquor um it was all you could drink for when we went as part of the package you can create your own packages to rent the place for the day like if you want the whole place everything that i just described the upstairs the downstairs all the fire pits the live music um potential bring in a, uh, a food truck, all that stuff, $500 for the day. That's all they charge. And then they're open to the public Wednesday through Friday from five to nine. So it's a four hour where you can just come and enjoy the winery. They usually bring in live entertainment for those nights and some kind of a food truck for food. Um, if there's enough of res people that are coming, they'll bring in a food truck. Um, and if you wanted to, you can rent out the top half for 250 for the night. So you can mix with some public on the the bottom half, but then you get the whole top half of the barn, the vent, the venue for 250 for the night, or you could just throw your own private party, have the whole place yourself for 500 on a weekend. I think I've never heard of being able to, to rent out an entire winery for 500 bucks. I mean, that's pretty crazy in my opinion. And it, it, it's, it's really I think it's really um, tactfully done the way they did it. If you're a fan of like rustic and going to like a cellar or wine, wine tasting, all that stuff, got to check this place out. The staff was phenomenal. The place was great. I thought I never heard of it, never been to it. I was shocked at how close it was. The 15 minute drive from my house. I mean, I was expecting to Google something that was going to be like Poplar Grove and it would take us 30, 40 minutes to get there. No, this was like literally in our backyards and we didn't even know about it. So major shout out to them. I think they are doing things different. I've never seen a winery like it with the what they have to offer. Their pricing is very competitive, very, I mean, I, I'm considering I already talked to Bruce on our team. We, we are thinking of putting together an event. I mean, that's how it, it's a great space. And I think that that would be a great thing for like a company outing. All right. So just to recap, so the name of the venue is Hidden Creek Estates. It's at 13276 White School Road in Roscoe, Illinois. So yeah, that is literally five minutes from my house um, from where I live. It's um, Hidden crk.com that's their website so h-i-d-d-e-n crk.com to find out all information what they have going on and just like in general like george was saying there's some beautiful pictures of the place you can book a fire pit so when the nights get cooler we're going into fall you can actually book a fire pit with private just for you and your group kind of like how we do um gazebos or igloos at some of the other places and like this yeah. Friday night, so the night you're listening to this, so tonight, it's bring your own picnic. So bring your own food, drink their wine, drink their alcohol, bring food that you want to have. And music is by Hip Pocket. That's who's um, there tonight, uh, July 29th. So they had um, Pizza Fresca there this past week. Cantina Taco was there on Thursday. So I mean, just... A nice um, variety of stuff and again it was one of these things that's it's here in roscoe and didn't even know it existed yeah. um you know a lot of people i know here in town they either go to like dc winery which is in south beloit or they go to mossbach which is in poplar grove uh caledonia that kind of, that general area and it's like you know each one of them has their own unique flavors and tastes and wines and music and they do food trucks and bring that kind of stuff in but just have one more space to go to uh what definitely I like makes about a difference this, what really stood out about this place is i don't get me wrong i like my wine and i absolutely love going to wineries to have wine they have unique wines they have great wine um and but they had a 
liquor collection that was top shelf like stuff that i would as a as a um, bourbon slash scotch kind of store that likes to have higher end stuff i was impressed with what they had available from their bar they, they definitely are catering to the high end so for people that like to go have a drink and don't necessarily want to have wine because you're not right. maybe you're a bourbon guy you can take your wife your your family or you have a party you get a gathering like you're going to a winery and still get your top end liquor which i was impressed with that part well that, that's a great segue because i don't know if you knew but wednesday of this week was national scotch day so while we're talking about that, George, what is your favorite scotch? Right now, let me see. Oh, I was going to say it's in my no, kitchen. No, don't, don't go look at <laughs> Oh, wow. It's one of those days already. <laughs> I just had it last <laughs> night. So I'm, I am lucky because I have a really good friend, Chris. And, you know, this is a good time to plug him. If you, if you ever want to, to see some satire comedy about complaining about Chicago, He's Chris from Chicago. You can, he's on Twitter. He's got videos. He makes movies. He's through um, Velvet. Uh, shoot, I forgot the name of it. Some Velvet, the company. But Chris from Chicago, he's hysterical. He's, uh, he's got a caricature of himself. And he just goes around and write, makes videos, like jokingly satire about the city of Chicago and how we're bad at certain things. And, and uh, it, it's just a great show to watch. But he his real job and when he's not Chris from Chicago is he owns a distribution for wine and he's got a huge distribution store um, in Chicago. And at one point he was carrying the, this specific scotch and it's Timensual is the name of it. And it's an 18 year aged. And for an 18 year age scotch, you're normally paying a couple hundred dollars a bottle it was priced uh, just under that, like 160, 170. But I kid you not, like I have yet to find one. It used to be McCallum 18 was my go-to scotch. And I think this Timensual is my new favorite. And it's about a hundred dollars less a bottle for what I consider equal, if not better quality. So Timensual, Timensual. doesn't well, carry it anymore, which don't. Stinks. Don't get me wrong, because I love I love a good McAllen. Don't like, but I would say for the money, my favorite scotch for the money would be the 14 year Glen Fittich. It's in the blue bottle. The blue bottle. Um, the 12 is basic. I mean, like it's a great scotch to get into. The 15 I've had, and I've had the 18, both very good. But to make the jump from the 14 to the 15. The flavor notes, the profiles are so much different. I just prefer the 14. And I mean, it's a big price jump too to go from the 14 to the 15 for some reason. So if you're looking for a good mid-level scotch to get started on, I would definitely recommend Glenfiddich 14 to anybody. Um, and then with our bourbons, since you segued us so well talking about scotches and bourbons, I wanted to have throw this out there to save the date for everybody. So September 24th at the Laurent House by Franklin Lloyd Wright. Now, if you don't know what the Laurent House is, we have a gem right here on um, uh, da, 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 Springbrook. It, I, I got to think the map in my head all the time. So yep. Springbrook between Spring Creek and Mulford. Uh, Close to Spring Creek is the Laurent House by Franklin Lloyd Wright. So... This is an architectural beauty. They're open for tours again. And from four o'clock to seven o'clock on September 24th, it is a Saturday afternoon. They're gonna be doing bourbon, brisket and brews. There's not a lot of information yet about the event. They're just asking everybody to save the date at the moment, but it's a fundraiser to celebrate the 70th anniversary of the Laurent House by Franklin Lloyd Wright. Now. If you don't know who Franklin Lloyd Wright is, and being a realtor and a former contractor, I'm drawn to his styles. Uh, yes. Architect, designer, uh, engineer, uh, writer. You know, he did artwork. I mean, the guy was just an amazing, he was a total Renaissance man. And uh, he designed a lot of Madison, a lot of the buildings in Madison, um, the, the big, um, what's it called? The Monona Terrace. He designed that entire that, building. 
mm -hmm. um, in Madison. So, and these are the houses. A lot of the houses are done in mid-century modern style, which I really like. I'm drawn to that style of architecture, um, the clean lines, the furniture. So it's definitely a good thing to check out. Again, I have no other information and I'll bring up more as we get closer to the event. Um, we, I have no dog in this fight. I do not have anything to do with the Lorenz house. I just thought it was really cool. And they're putting together a bunch of things I enjoy. Bourbon, yeah. brisket, yep. great architecture, blues music. What more could you ask for? It's a nice Saturday afternoon. So I know George is going to try to make it with me. I'm going to try to be there. So it would be your opportunity to hang out with the, some of the guys repping the state line. Um, yep. Could be, be fun. So I'll, I'll say one last thing about Timinchul. So it is distilled at the Glen Levitt Distillery. So everybody knows Glen Levitt. That's yes, like everybody knows. Glenn Fittich. Well, so well Glen Levitt the, is, the, is the bar, is basically bar scotch. Like, I mean, every yeah. bar you go to U.S. for a scotch and soda, it's automatically a Glen Levitt. That's what it is. So it's like their highest, highest end scotch. It's from that region, from that distillery. It's just hard to find. I mean, you can't, most places do not carry it. You got to have right. unique distributors that have that license. And my buddy had it for a while, so no longer, but yep. So we All got, right. we've got that. We, we talked about a little bit about that um, event in September or when, when was it again? That It'll event? be September 24th. September. So September we've got 24th. some time. We've got a couple of months until then. It yep. might even be during our off season when this happens so we'll just have to record some some, some chaos footage. some footage yeah. and do a do a recap when we come back because as we did say earlier when we first started this program we're going to do 20 episodes for season one minus take episode a, 13 minus episode 13 <laughs> take take a small four to six week break in between seasons and then come back for season two it will be 10 episodes and we'll be running 10 episodes with um interviewing and bringing in guests and working on sponsors and all that fun stuff so yep season one primarily was uh, our opportunity to get our audience to know us really want to dive in and, and make you basically build our characters we're the three stars of this podcast we want to i mean everything we're telling you is basically we're opening our lives up as a book like a book to let you know i mean we three or in the state line area. We three do business in the state line area. We three network in the state line area. We've lived here for a while and we're just trying to bring the state line to you guys. So, um, and, and every, all the cool stuff we hear about, bring it to you. Next season, we'll start doing some more one-on-one -on -one interviews, bring people in, guests onto the show to give you guys a deeper look into some of the stuff that we've uncovered. Um, and, and we wanna get into these regular, yeah, 10 episodes couple you know, good month month and a half break 10 episodes another break and that way we hit all the different seasons of the year we'll be able to do some winter stuff and some of the you know christmas walks and right. different shopping things that are happening we'll be able to do stuff that's in the spring and then some summer highlights for what's here in the local area so yep great great synopsis of where we're heading with this podcast and again great time also to get people to like, share, do all your podcasty things, your YouTube -y things. Like, share, comment, let us know if there's something happening in the area we may have missed or that's upcoming that you think would be cool for us to highlight and maybe even attend and uh, bring to you guys the state line area. So, and we have our challenge still going on the Repping the State Line Facebook page. We now have yep. 976 members. So, we've grown by about 25 members in the last, last two episode. weeks yeah so i mean again guys get on there um like the show like the rep in the state line group on facebook and send us a message let us know what you would like to see where you'd like to see us so with that george the sun is coming out i've got a lot of things to do today i'm sure you have a ton of things so yes we Tomorrow's hope josh beginning. we hope josh and his family are having a great time in lake geneva um, having some we well-rested, we, well-deserved rest. And we didn't really roast him like we, like me and you got roasted. So Well, we're, Josh, we're a little nicer a, than Josh. Get, yeah, <laughs> clearly, clearly. Well, so Josh gets a nice little pass for this time, but we'll, we'll come up with something next time he goes on vacation. 
Well, that's but it. Appre- appreciate you guys. Thanks for those loyal people that download us every week and watch. Um, start sending us messages. We love to interact with some of our people uh, out there that are watching. And we'll see you guys next week. We'll have a lot, a nice little recap of vacation, how our play day went and start talking about um, back to school. That's going to be the next big topic coming up here in August. So, All right. Thanks guys. You guys have a great week. We'll see you next week. All right. Have a great week, everybody. Bye.